from a professional studio condenser microphone to a professional dynamic mic. I've never really had a chance to work with a budget or cheaper option until now. Before we get started, I just want to say that Fifine have sent me these microphones to try out and to give you my honest opinion on the products and they have not paid me in any way for this review. So this is the Fifine AM8. The mic is tailored towards the much more budget gamer and especially the budget streamer with the price point of around about £70 at the time of this video. And if you want the boom arm, the package is called the AM8T and it comes in at an extra seven pounds. It's part of their amplitude range, which we're really going for the extra budget option for that. It comes in their usual three colors, such as black, white, and pink. So the first thing that I was caught off guard with the mic was the actual size. Recently, Elgato have come out with their DX microphone and Rode have come out with their NT microphone. So I thought this was initially going to be about the same size of them, judging by the pictures. However, it was a little bit larger than expected, but it's still a fantastic design, with a nice rounded square body, two knobs for your mic level and headphone level, and a mute button on the other side. The build quality isn't the most premium feeling of products, but it is a budget mic and that's what we're going for here. Because of that, it does also lack the weight of a good microphone. Above the microphone and headphone level knobs, there's also a button to change up the RGB around the base of the microphone. However, since this microphone does support both USB-C and XLR connections, you'll have to know that the RGB colors do not work with just an XLR input. And the same applies to the headphone and mic level on the microphone. It comes with a base mount for the normal AM8 model and an arm bracket for the AM8T. Between the two connections, I do have to say I found the XLR a much cleaner sound than what comes through from the USB-C. And here's a little example just to compare the two of them. A yacht slid around the point into the bay. The two met while playing on the sand. The ink stained dried on the finished page. The walled down was seized without a fight. The lease ran out in 16 weeks. A yacht slid around the point into the bay. The two met while playing in the sand. The ink stained dried on the finished page. The walled town was seized without a fight. The lease ran out in 16 weeks. And the sound you do actually get from the AM8 for me just blew me away. I was not expecting for a mic of this price tag to have such a good bass response. Usually when you go for a cheaper microphone option, you're met with a tinny and high end sound. And this microphone just does not have that at all. I even use this microphone live on my stream for a week solid. And when I first started using it, no one even questioned the difference between this and my usual go-to of the Shure SM7B. Speaking of which, how do they face off against each other? The Navy attacked the big task force. See the cat glaring at the scared mouse. There are more than two factors here. The hat brim was white and too droopy. The lawyer tried to lose his case. The grass curled around the fence post. The Navy attacked the big task force. See the cat glaring at the scared mouse. There are more than two factors here. The hat brim was white and too droopy. The lawyer tried to lose his case. The grass curled around the fence post. As you can see, it's still pretty damn close, especially for a £250 price difference between the two. So with all these positives coming from this pricing, the sound quality, the options between the USB-C and the XLR connections, there must be a catch, right? And for me, there is three. One, the microphone foam cover isn't as good as what it could be. Fifine seems to have opted in for this extra, extra soft approach for it. They've got this on their other microphones too, and think that will be good enough. But in terms of popping when speaking into the microphone, it's pretty hard to avoid it. Now compare the quality of the cover to the SM7B. The one from Shure has got much more of a coarse feeling to it, which really does cancel out the annoying pops when speaking into the mic. Because of this, I found myself just, just angling the microphone slightly below my mouth for when I talked to make sure I wasn't going directly into it. Second point, every now and again, I found that I would accidentally tap the mic, not even just the top of it, maybe the sides or the mic arm that I had it on or anything attached to it. And my God, would it pick up on that noise? In fact, I'm pretty sure I started to get into a good beat at one point on stream while, while doing this.
This might be to do with the bill being quite light and it's made out of plastic rather than metal. I'm actually just going to double check to make sure it is plastic and not metal, right? Yeah, that's not metal, that's plastic. Making sure I'm not getting this wrong. Just making sure my facts are correct. It does feel plasticky. Three, the mic boom arm it comes with for the AM8T isn't anything to shout about. I've had a similar one of these before. A much more budget option. The metal isn't as solid as what you'd hope for something you're going to be moving on a daily basis. You can easily bend on any of the catches for the springs and that could easily snap it and yeah. But however it's only an extra seven pounds more than what the mic is by itself so you really can't complain at the end of the day for that sort of quality for that. So in the end the question is would I recommend this microphone? Well to tell you the truth a good friend of mine swapped out his HyperX quadcast to the Fifine AM8 as he was always having issues with the quadcast. And I became curious of the model after I was absolutely blown away by it the first time I heard him on, on the mic. So I had to get onto Fifine to send one of them on to me to try it for myself. And I can confidently say that if you're looking for a microphone within the 60 to 70 pound bracket, you'd be silly not to go for it. I know I'm definitely going to be keeping one aside for certain times when I want to use it and if I want to change the look up of my setup and within that I don't have to worry about too much compromise in quality going from my Shure SM7B to the AM8. Anyways guys that's all for me today if you like this review and if it helped you in any way in making your microphone decision don't forget to hit that like button if you want to ask questions about the AM8 drop it down below in the comments and if you don't want to miss out on the next video be sure to subscribe to the channel. Until then, I'll catch you in the next one. I'll see you.